Oh, you must go to the dolphins and ask them to heal you. They have healing powers. They can heal you, Carla. So I thought, okay, fine. I'll, I'll see if the dolphins can heal me. So Mac and I get in the water, and the guy says, swim over there. And that's the moment that I discovered I could no longer swim. So Macklin had to sort of drag me over to the dolphins, and they came up under me and pushed me up out of the water. It was the most incredible experience you can imagine. And I was in tears just thinking about all the amazing experiences there are in the world. And afterwards, Macklin said, so, did you ask the dolphins to heal you? And I said, yep. Yeah. They said, ALS? <laughs> Bummer, good luck with that. And that is a little bit from uh, the documentary Leave Them Laughing about Carla Zilbersmith and uh, her journey through the disease ALS. John Zaritsky joining us, director of Leave Them Laughing, Academy Award winner, and another great documentary from Hello, you, John. Hello, John. How are you? Great. Thank you. Yeah, now, tell us about how you found out about this wonderful woman. Well, appropriately enough, I found her through a joke of hers. I was reading the Globe and Mail on New Year's Eve, and they had two pages of memorable quotes from the previous year. And in the midst of this, these two pages was this joke about death and dying that I actually thought was funny. It was a <laughs> right. genuine LOL. Yes. So I rushed to my computer, Googled Carla Silbersmith, because I had never heard of her, YouTubed her, found all sorts of performance videos and things there, and then discovered this beautifully written blog she had written because she was a brilliant writer yeah. about her diagnosis and, and the progression of her disease. Well, and, and you sort of uh, label this movie as a musical comedy about dying. <laughs> and that's Easy a, sell. Well, this is a lot to wrap your head around, right? I mean, when you read something like that, you don't really, especially in a documentary. Yeah. Uh, but Carla is so ridiculously funny about the experience that, that is ending her life. Yeah, she truly was the funniest person I've ever met in my life. And even though she was within a year of dying when I met her and she was badly disabled, confined to a wheelchair, every day that, that we shot with Carl, we looked forward to it because it was always going to be day, a day full of laughter and jokes and one of the best situational comedians i've ever seen yeah. i mean like taking the moment you know not writing lines all the time but taking whatever's happening around her and making it genuinely funny but it's 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 so disarming when you're watching it and you, you realize if you know anything about als i mean the progression of this disease is is you know a couple of years usually uh, to yeah. death so to watch someone sort of laugh their way through it is a very strange juxtaposition yeah it, it sometimes does for the start of the film make an audience a little uncomfortable like this yeah. is funny but should I be laughing yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean well because really. she's so self-deprecating and somebody in a wheelchair making jokes about themselves dying isn't something that we're really used to but the thing I think is the most important about this documentary is telling people uh, the story of ALS because not a lot of people know what Lou Gehrig's disease is and how it affects people and Carla told its story too through her right right I think she made it huge contribution to furthering public understanding of this disease and yeah. uh, bringing the disease forward in a way that is acceptable for people that we don't have to keep this in the closet we don't have to be yeah. ashamed of it or anything else and also a different perspective in uh, looking at death yeah exactly bringing death out of the closet and making it something that we can it's going to happen to all of us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, why not enjoy the experience well, and, and, as she did? You know? and, and she, has mean, a, she has a son who uh, is, I believe, when you were filming, around 16 years old. He 16, just turned so. 16 when I uh, was And their relationship is uh, amazing. I mean, very close, very special, very open. Uh, and the two of them together, I, I, I don't know if I've seen anything like this before for a mother-son relationship. Yeah, it was quite unique, you know, and Mac, her son, was a, quite a truly remarkable kid. I, I, he was like 16 going on 36 or 46, you know. And she teases him about that all the time. All, well, it was sometimes role reversal, you know. Yeah. He assumed the role of the parent, and yeah. she became the, the child, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
when he's chewing her out for having a friend of hers smoke dope in the, in, 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 in the house. And know? it's like a 16-year-old yeah. lecturing <laughs> a full-grown woman. Nobody, exactly. <laughs> and John, what has been the reaction? Because, of course, you've screened it. Uh, it's won an award just over the weekend yeah. at uh, the Women in Film and Television Adding Festival. Adding to the collection of awards. Yeah, nominated for a genie. But what has the reaction uh, been from audiences that you've witnessed? Uh, well, audiences, of course, are for me the, the most important thing. The film won a number of jury awards, but most importantly, it won audience awards at the Vancouver Film Festival in the fall, Mill Valley Film Festival in California in the fall, just recently in Sedona, Arizona at a film festival, another one in New Zealand. So everywhere it goes, audiences love Carla. And yeah. as I say, give us a, some major awards. Uh, what's it like for you as a film? I mean, you know, you have such vast experience. You've made so many documentaries. We've been lucky enough to talk to you about quite a few of them. But, uh, you know, when you're dealing with a person uh, sort of one-on-one -on -one and getting to know the insides of their life, both, you know, with Carla before she had ALS and then during her disease, is it possible to separate yourself from the person and, and just sort of be a documentarian? Or Not at all. I mean, I was a love with Carla. I mean, she's the only woman I've never had a physical relationship with that I've been in love with. <laughs> Seriously, she was beautiful, smart, and funny, and you couldn't help but love Carla. And yeah. she did a great imitation of oh you uh, during the end credits, which we're going to have a look at uh, <laughs> right now. Here's Carla doing her best John Zeritsky. Johnny doing word association. Snowflake, avalanche, <laughs> uh, kittens, brown. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> slow, painful death, money in the bank, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, she nailed me so she completely. Really did. You know. well, and she it's... used to call me Dr. Death because of all, <laughs> <laughs> because of all my do previous documentaries, somebody's died in it, you know. Have you, uh, have you kept up with, uh, with Mac, her son, at I all? I have. I was spent a, a couple of days with Mac at the Sedona Film Festival, and I'm really, really happy to report that he is going to be graduating at 18 from University. Really? He's in the top 5% of his class, sits on a student council, and most importantly, I know for Carla, arrived in Sedona with a beautiful and smart girlfriend. Oh, how nice. Yeah. And, and uh, he's obviously seen the documentary. Carla didn't get an, Did she get an opportunity Carla to see it? Carla actually did get a chance to see uh, pretty well a finished film uh, before her death. Uh, they had a special uh, screening at the, at the College of Marin. Yeah. where she had taught theatrical arts. And she and Mac were able to sit in an audience of 650 people who oh, just wow. went crazy over the film. So she experienced the love that yeah. an audience has for her well, and the film. It's just such a beautiful homage, not just to, to a single person, but that thing that can make human beings so special. You know, that ability to, to, to take something so devastating and, and find some peace within that is, is something that... Uh, you know, it's so inspirational when you see someone do that and, and makes you realize how much control you can have on your life. Exactly, and as one critic put it, you know, yes, it's about death and dying, but it really truly is an ode to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Well said. Yeah. When are people going to be able to see this? I hope soon. I mean, I really do. I'm praying that, you know, some of these awards will finally pay off and that a Canadian theatrical distri distributor and a Canadian broadcaster will come on board finally and yeah. get this film out there. Well, it is amazing, John. Congratulations and good luck at the Genie Awards. Uh, Leave Them Laughing won Best Feature Documentary at the Vancouver Women in Film Festival. That was just over the past weekend and it was also uh, nominated for a Genie, which is happening tomorrow and the Genie Awards are, might actually be funny this year. They're going to be hosted oh, by the well. one and only William Shatner. Uh, so make sure that you check it out. Thanks again, John. Thank you so much. Nice Thanks, John. Snowflake, avalanche. <laughs> you do a good job. <laughs> I love that whole line. That's beautiful. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Rob Feeney, food concept architect for Cactus Club Cafe, will be here talking about something delicious you can make at home. Stick around. We'll be right back. Thanks, Thanks again. Thank you.